Well, dasvidaniya, my Russian fans, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Fuck this guitar. Fuck it. Wow, wow, wow. It's been a hot minute, like a fucking year since I've read any creepypasta. And boy, do I miss it. I mean, I was reading a lot of creepypasta back in the day. I mean, it's always been my cultural blind spot. It's like the one thing that I've never understood. I've enjoyed ARGs. I've seen a lot of movies. I've read some books. Hey, House of Leaves, how you doing, bitch? But for whatever reason, uh, Creepypasta just never really found its way into my vernacular. I, it's, it's, it's just something I don't know anything about. I mean, I know about Squidward's suicide. But today, I've decided to try something new for everybody at home because it's the Halloween season and we need something spooky. So, I've never read the Russian sleep experiment. I know, bitch. How did this happen to me? Like, I fuck with scary things. I fuck with horror things. I like it when people do experiments and people become all fucked up and weird. That sounds great to me. And when people are Russian. That's good too. So today I'm gonna take my followers to Russia. With the Russian sleep experiment. We're gonna read it right now in front of God and everybody. And I'm gonna give you my honest reactions as I have them. Maybe they will be similar to your reactions or maybe they'll be the opposite reaction and you'll get really mad at me and you'll tell me I suck in the comments section. <gasps> I do suck by the way. The story of the Russian sleep experiment. Russian researchers in the late 1940s kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment to carefully monitor their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them, since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras, so they had only microphones and five inch thick glass porthole sized windows into the chamber to monitor them. The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on, but no bedding, running water, and toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. They're dogs that read literature. Okay, well, so far my biggest problem with this is I have no idea why they're doing this study. What are they hoping to learn? You know, when you do like the scientific method, you're like hypothesis, conclusion. What was their hypothesis? And they were like, I bet if we make a motherfucker stay up for 15 days, they're gonna have like worms come out of their fucking eyes. Brain worms. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. Everything was fine. For the first five days, the subjects hardly complained, having been promised falsely that they would be freed if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. That was 15 days. It was. So they fucked that up there. Yeah. Oops. Their conversations and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past, and the general tone of their conversations took on a much darker aspect after the fourth day mark. Things got really weird when Bob brought up his divorce drama. That's when everybody just really started to go crazy in there. I just imagine this is exactly like the lighthouse. They're all just sleeping and masturbating and farting all over each other. No wonder they lost their fucking minds. After five days, they start to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternatively whispering to the microphones and one-way mirrored portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think that they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades. At first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. After nine days, the first of them started screaming. I like how this is just a story about everybody quarantining and COVID and how like literally on the ninth day of quarantine, everybody just started screaming and it's too, it's too appropriate. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. He continued attempting to scream, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. The researcher postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. That's something that can happen from strain, I buy it. The most surprising thing about this behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather didn't react to it. They continued whispering to the microphones until the second of the captors started to scream. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, and pasted them calmly over the glass portholes. The screaming promptly stopped, and so did the whispering. Hold on, so the one dude started talking about his divorce drama, and they were like, oh fuck. And then about five days after they started talking about their divorce drama, one of them just started fucking screaming, tore his own vocal cords out because he was just like, God damn it, Dan, I don't give a shit. I don't care about your fucking kids. RTM screams one more time, I'm gonna poop in a book and put it on the wall. Oh my God, if he fucking screams one more time, I'm gonna poop in a book and put it on the wall. <laughs> give me that book, I'm gonna shit on it and put it on the wall. 
wall. After three more days passed, the researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working, since they thought it impossible that no sound could be coming with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at very heavy level of, extren of strenuous exercise. They were just fucking each other. You know they were just fucking each other. I'm tired of them looking at me. I just want to fuck all four of my friends. On the morning of the 14th day, the researcher did something they said they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced, We are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. This not exciting. It's not exciting. Don't want this. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in calm voice response. We no longer want to be freed. And this is where it becomes a creepy pasta where you get creeped out and you have spaghetti. Debate broke out amongst the researchers and military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more response using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. The chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air, and immediately voices from the microphone began to object. Three different voices began begging as if pleading for the life of loved ones to turn the gas back on. The chamber was opened and soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever, and so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive, although no one could rightly call the state of any one of them in life. So wait, so the researchers were like, they're alive, but they're not, in they're not alive. I don't think these are fucking scientists. No, that doesn't sound like a scientific thing. You know, he's like, whatever is between being alive and dead, we you know. We made him into a ghost. He's a ghost! The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. Well then how did they shit on the walls? They no, peed like, on the toilet paper? They, they peed on the Put food. it on the wall? They, wish they, they peed on the food? No, they, well, no, I mean they did poop, so I don't know where they got the poop. Where did they poop? Did how, they, where did they get the poop from? Did they get more poop from getting poop? Did they get more poop somehow? That's what no sleep does. It makes you make When you poop. don't sleep, poop. you poo a lot. Poop. That's why coffee makes you poop. Oh. Hey! There were chunks of meat from the dead test subject's thighs and wait, chest wait. stuffed into the drain at the center of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. So basically what they're saying is the dead man was cut and put into the drain so that more water would show up. Why did they do, Why did they do this to the dead man? Let's find out. Jen Kui. Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. All five surviving test members also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their body. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone on their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth like the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicate that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. They literally cannot prove that. Like, what if one guy took his fingers to claw another guy, you still get the same result. That guy doesn't have skin and there's no skin on the fingers, uh, right? Twice. Can we get fucking Dexter Morgan in here to check this shit out? The abdominal organs below the rib cage of all four test subjects had been removed. Uh, while the heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place, the skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the rib cage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid upon the floor, fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects. Oh no, my blood vessels! Ah, they were moved like worms. I carefully removed all of my blood vessels. <laughs> Cause I knew where they were. Oh. I know how to do that. Also, wouldn't that shit be lying in dirty, like, weak old water? Cause they stuffed the guy's organs in the water? I just don't know about this story. All Is it real? Whatever, dog. Okay. Well, whatever, what does it matter? They weren't eating anyway. And also, how did they shit? What even is going on in the Russian sleep experiment? Our critique of the Russian sleep experiment is ironically mostly with the shit continuity being- People believe this is real. It quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh and they had ripped off and eaten it over the course of days. I think in reality, like, they would pro- like, the people inside would probably just fucking fall asleep. 
<laughs> what I'm saying is this is edgy 14 year old bullshit. Most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, but still many refused to return to the chamber to remove test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternatively begged and demanded that the gas be turned on, lest they fell asleep. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died from having his throat ripped out. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off and an artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Basically, he, he had his leg bitten while the person was also tearing off his scrotum. Fucking black metal, y'all. Russian cannibal shit. Another five of the soldiers lost their lives if you count the ones that committed suicides in the week following the incident. Nice, throw that in there. The yeah, end. just get them. Yeah. Yeah, they were miserable. In the struggle, one of the four living subjects had his spleen ruptured and he bled out almost immediately. The medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of a morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking his ribs and arm of one doctor. When the heart was seen to beat for a full two minutes after he had bled out to the point that there was more air in his vascular system than blood, even after it stopped. He continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach and just repeating the word more over and over, weaker and weaker, until he finally fell silent. He was just really horny. He you got, he got so way. horny that he died. All right, y'all. This is a little story about a guy who uh, was so horny that he died. The three surviving test members were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continued begging for the gas, demanding to be kept awake. Sounds like they just fucking poisoned those shit out of their brain. Yeah. The most injured of the three was taken to the only surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedation that they had given him to prepare him for the surgery. He fought furiously against his restraints when the anesthetic gas was brought in to put him under. He managed to tear most of the way through a four inch wide leather strap on one wrist, even though the weight of a 200 pound soldier was holding that wrist as well. It took only a little more anesthetic than normal to put him under, but the instant his eyelids fluttered and closed, his heart stopped. In the autopsy of the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had tripled the normal levels of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn and he had broken nine bones in the struggle to not be subdued. Most of them were from the force his own muscles had exerted on him. This is the movie Split. The second survivor had been the first of the group of the five to start screaming. His vocal cords destroyed, he was unable to beg or object surgery, and he only reacted by shaking his head violently in disapproval when the anesthetic gas was brought near him. He shook his head, yes, when someone suggested reluctantly that they try surgery without anesthetic, and did not react for the entire six hour procedure, replacing his abdominal organs and attempting to cover them with what remained of his skin. The surgeon presiding stated repeatedly that it should be medically possible for the patient to still be alive. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be shouldn't. It should not be possible that this person is still alive. Hey, hey, uh, bud. <laughs> One terrified nurse assisting the surgery stated that she had seen the patient's mouth curl into a smile several times whenever his eyes met hers. When the surgery ended, the subject looked at the surgeon and began to wheeze loudly, attempting to talk while struggling. Assuming this must have been some drastic importance, the surgeon had a pen and pad fetched so the patient could write his message. It was simple. Keep cutting. Me and my surgeon. <laughs> Keep cutting. The other two test subjects were given the same surgery, both without anesthetic as well. Although they had to be injected with a paralytic for the duration of the operation, the surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the, parent, the patients laughed continuously. I'm surprised that it doesn't go there because it goes everywhere else, but like apparently they, they could give two shits about their dick like the whole like fucking they, time. Like the first thing in their insanity would have been they won't stop cranking it in the cameras. That's how I feel. I feel like they would definitely, like, probably masturbate themselves to death more than anything. They would crank it before- That's they... what I would do. Exactly. You flick the bean until you start screaming, you shit in a book, and then you rip out your organs. It just happened. Yes. And then you come. <laughs> the surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researcher with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak, 
speak, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given. I must remain awake. All three subjects' restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into a chamber, awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers facing the wrath of the military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of the project considered euthanizing the surviving subjects. The commanding officer, a former KGB agent, instead saw potential and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. The researchers strongly objected, but they were overruled. Oh fuck yeah, now it's gonna get fucking crazy. In preparation for being sealed in the the chamber again, the subjects were connected to an EEG monitor and had their restraints padded for a long-term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that at this point, all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously. The mute subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all of his might, first left, then right, then left again, for something to focus on. The remaining subject was holding his head off the pillow and blinking right rapidly, having been the first to be wired for EEG, most of the researchers were monitoring his brainwaves in surprise. They were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplicably. It looked as if he were repeatedly suffering from brain death before returning to normal. Me too, bitch. As they focused on paper scrolling out of the brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut at the same moment his head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to that of a deep sleep, then flatlined for the last time as his heart simultaneously simultaneously stopped. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brainwaves showed the same flat lines as the one who had just died from falling asleep. The commander gave the order to seal the chamber with both subjects inside, as well as three researchers. One of the named three immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes, then turned the gun on the mute subject and blew his brains out as well. He pointed his gun at the remaining subject, still restrained to the bed, as the remaining members of the medical team fled into the room. I won't be locked in here with these things. Not with you, he screamed at the man strapped to the table. What are you, he demanded. I must know, the subject just smiled. Have you forgotten so easily, the subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal heaven where we cannot tread. So somebody told the writer that he really had to hammer his point home. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out, so nearly free. And scene. That is called the Russian sleep experiment. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, oh, hi, sorry, oh my god, we have to finish the video. Oh god, so the camera, the fucking, the SD card thing, it fell up, we can't do nothing about it. So the video unfortunately had to end there, right at the ending of the reading. So now I'm going to share with you some quick hot opinions about the story that we just read. Consider it like a what have we learned segment. Number one, why did they do this experiment? I don't understand. And it frightens me, I think. I think that's the intended effect. Number two, if people stay up for a really long time, they do a lot of weird shit with feces, but they don't do a lot of weird shit with sex. This is an important scientific discovery and no one's thinking about it. And of course, number three, if your test subject becomes a hideous, horrible monster, consider shooting it in the head really early on, like way early, before it like rips your face off or does anything horrible, or you see it's like weird, mangled, fucked up body. Just, you don't, just quit your job at the Secret Service. You don't have to go in and see that shit. No one needs to know about the sleep experiment. No one. Not me, not you. But here we are. It's a creepy pasta. It's so scary 
that it had to become a story. You know, there are a lot of actual real-life atrocities that have occurred on the planet <laughs> that you could write about. Look at the way that they tested psychedelics on people. Look at that crazy shit. Look at all the war crimes and shit that has happened. Yes, I guess you could slip in a fake one called the Russian sleep experiment and everyone would believe it even though it's really hokey and kind of Lovecraftian. But at the same time, I don't know. There are others. <laughs> Have you heard of the Holocaust? Now that's some really fucking scary shit. Thank you for watching my video about the Russian sleep experiment. I too will not be sleeping tonight. So in honor of us not sleeping, let us gnaw at our flesh, wipe our shit on the, on the walls, and beg for more gas. Always bring me more gas. Hey buddy, can you spare some gas? I'm looking for some extra gas. Out of gas. Out of road, out of car, I don't know how I'm gonna go. Consider subscribing to this YouTube channel if you like the following things. Girls, this one, that's all, that's the end of the list because it's, it's YouTube, so it's me too. That's all you get. You get me 100%. Leave a like on this video if you like me. Oh boy, I sure do need the dopamine right now, so y'all better deliver. And if you really love my content or me, you can head on over to patreon.com slash and throw a dollar in my metaphorical hat where I get paid to make you do a giggle and hopefully a fart. Am I right, boys? Thank you for watching. I owe you all one giant internet hug token where after COVID, when we see each other, you get to redeem it. So if you're seeing this video right now, congratulations, you've won one hug after the apocalypse. Here's to surviving. You get on out there and get some sleep. Shit.